Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 26, 2022, around 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for two tropical cyclones to be forming, one in the Gulf of Mexico and one near the Lesser Antilles, moving into the Caribbean over the next several days. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we have a couple of things going on today. First of all, in the Gulf of Mexico, we have a tropical disturbance. This is actually a non-tropical load that originated from a decaying uh, complex of thunderstorms over the southeast U.S. This has now moved into the Gulf of Mexico and is expected to be drifting over the next couple of days, generally in the westerly direction towards Texas and Louisiana. In fact, portions of the southern coast of Louisiana are already getting hit by some of the rain. There's a potential for development with that. We are also watching Invest Area 94L with a 70% chance of development as it heads into the Caribbean over the next several days and more tropical waves behind that. So again, the tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center as of 2 p.m. Here is this non-tropical disturbance over the next few days moving generally westernly. And then we have Invest Area 94L. This has been upgraded to a 70% chance over the next five days as it heads generally on this very southerly track towards Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados and some of the southern islands. And then eventually this will end up somewhere out here in the Caribbean. So what could happen? Well, first of all, we'll take a look real quickly at the system in the Gulf of Mexico. And here it is right here, moving generally westernly. And we will have to talk about this over the next several days as, again, this could still bring some inclement weather to portions of Texas and Louisiana in the form of heavy rainfall and flooding. Maybe the potential for an isolated tornado or two with some of that additional wind shear. But other than that, there is no significant concern, at least for the moment. And then with the Invest Area 94L, now we talked about this yesterday. There's going to be a big ridge of high pressure centered over the southeast U.S. over the next few days. And then we have 94L over here trying to approach into the island chain. Now, the problem with this is that this big ridge of high pressure is generally not going to be allowing for much in the room of northward you know, motion out of the system. So this probably will not gain much latitude. It's pretty much stuck at a very low latitude for right now. And that could be a problem because not only will it impact people, but we could also have a lot of land interaction here. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything with this. If you look here at the visible satellite, the zoomed out uh, sector here, we notice that we have a couple of things going on today. First of all, we have generally more localized convection and deeper shower and thunderstorm activity than compared to yesterday. If we you know, kind of recall from yesterday, we didn't really have a well-organized system. We had a low-level circulation, but it was not well-organized with thunderstorm activity. It was very devoid. Today, that's a completely different story. Overnight, we had a pretty good convective burst, and we noticed that there's a lot of convection ongoing. There's still a lot of dry air to the north, and there is still some uh, easterly shear that is pushing thunderstorm convection off towards the west here. But this is expected to abate by later this afternoon as this generally moves towards the west northwest again you can see how close it already is to south america at this point so what could be expected well if we look here at the gfs forecast this is the 12z run valid for 2 p.m this afternoon at the 850 millibar vorticity so the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground and what we noticed that today, again, we noticed that we have this broad spin. Now, the GFS is not doing very well with regards to initialization. It is underdoing the amount of thunderstorm activity. And that's a problem because you need thunderstorms to generate spin and help to tighten a circulation. Well, the GFS is consistently underperforming at that, but we can still look at it in the sense that the overall grand scheme of everything. So on the GFS, this wave doesn't develop here, but it does move through the island chain and then eventually tries to go on to develop over here in the, you know, kind of the south central portion of the Caribbean near Central America. Now, this could happen or this could could not happen. There's a couple of different things here. If we look here at the 6Z Euro, we notice that the European is certainly a little bit stronger uh, and a little bit slower. We kind of notice that again, this is passing through here just about Wednesday. So uh, the model trends have been for a little bit of a slower end system. And then here's that little system out here in the Gulf as well. But we notice that if we look at the upper level environment at this time, 
pretty favorable actually there will be this you know tropical upper tropospheric trough a you know low upper level low here but that won't really be impacting it generally speaking there's pretty favorable wind environment even though there is seemingly some easterly shear it isn't all that easterly shear it's actually not all that bad so there actually is you know the potential for outflow generation here and this is important because, again, what's going to be happening over the next couple of days, the 500 height anomalies, if we look here, we notice that we have a big ridge of high pressure basically setting up across the southeast U.S. And this ridge moves in and kind of settles. And it really prevents a storm from gaining much latitude. So you typically would see maybe a, a storm start to pick up some latitude through here. Well, that's not happening. In fact, it's just getting shoved into Central America. But a stronger storm will be more likely to turn north. And that could still happen. It is not certainly impossible. We'll look at the HMON forecast here for Invest Area 94L. We notice that if we look here, generally speaking, right as it approaches the island chain, we're starting to get that ramp up in intensity. And this is when it could develop into a well-organized system, at least a tropical depression or storm at this time. The HWARF upper level environment. Now, again, I will caution that the HWARF forecast here, it is very sensitive in a lot of different things. And typically, I mean, this is a, a good reliable model, but with invests with, you know, varying different degrees and no recon plane data, uh, the intensity forecast can be quite overdone. So I just want to kind of throw that disclaimer out there for the minute. But generally speaking, if we look here, we actually notice that the system again here by Wednesday, this is about 5 p.m. Wednesday, it's passing through the island chain at this point. Pretty favorable upper level conditions at this point and these the moisture at this point will also be very well established there is a pretty significant moisture pool around this system now there is some drier to the north and again cyclonic wind generally speaking is going to try to pull this down on the western periphery of the cyclone so you might see that western side a little bit kind of cut off uh, from convection and certainly not as expansive as the eastern and kind of northern sides uh, but generally speaking, overall, pretty favorable environment. And this eventually makes its way out here then into this region. Now, at this particular point, again, the upper level environment looks relatively favorable. There will be this upper level low right here trying to induce a little bit of vertical shear, but this actually enhances outflow temporarily. So this might be able to get a boost in, in energy down here. And we'll have to try to see if this tries to sink north of Central America or this actually just kind of sinks into Central America. Either way, there's kind of a margin of error here between Central America and just north into this region. I would not expect this to enter the Gulf of Mexico. I, I don't really think that's going to happen, but I would never say never. There's certainly a non-zero chance of that happening. But at this point, I just do not really see that being at all really likely. So... The overall environment is pretty favorable. Now, in terms of impacts, sensible impacts to the Lesser Antilles, including Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada, Barbados, and portions of uh, North Central, uh, North South America. Storm surge threat is relatively low. There is a low wind damage threat, at least for now. There's a moderate flooding risk and a low tornado risk. So when we say low, there's a non-zero threat of it, but... The tornado threat, flooding threat, certainly probably the higher end threats. And again, that kind of secondary threats will be storm surge and wind damage. This will probably not be a significant wind threat, at least uh, as it's coming through. But still 50, 60 mile per hour winds that can certainly, you know, blow down some trees, you know, scatter, you know, loose objects. But not really something where it's going to cause widespread substantial impacts, but that flooding risk is what I'm most concerned about. So again, bottom line, flooding, gusty winds, and isolated tornadoes expected for portions of the Lesser Antilles, including Trinidad, Tobago, and Barbados, and portions of northern South America over the next couple of days as Invest Area 94L approaches by Tuesday into Wednesday. And it looks like then by Thursday, everything will begin to clear out. So again, 
We'll be watching this area very carefully over the next several days. And then eventually this moves into the Caribbean where potential impacts to Central America could be expected as we progress forward in time. All right. With that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.